my name's Emily and I'm a children's speech and language therapist at Chesterfield Royal Hospital. Today we're going to have a look at how we can support your child's understanding of questions and also develop their abstract language skills. And to do this, we're going to look at the blank levels of questioning model. So blank levels of questioning was established when its creators went into schools and observed the language that teachers were using. And they found that the questions that they were asking the children could be categorized into four different categories. And these start from simple questions, which require quite concrete answers and move all the way up to more complex questions, which require more abstract answers. Here you can see an overview of the four different blank levels. Typically, 60% of three-year-olds understand levels one and two, and 65% of five-year-olds can understand levels three and four. So let's now look at the levels in slightly more detail, starting with level one, which is naming or matching perception. And this is where the answer is right there in front of you. So questions focus on the immediate environment and they just require concrete thinking. The child's responses can be short or they could even be non-verbal, so they might point to respond to the question. Here you can see some question examples and the types of questions that you might ask at level one. So you might ask the child to point to an object, show you an object, find a matching object or name an object. Level two is all about describing or selective analysis of perception. And this is where the answer is in front of you, but you have to look a bit harder for it. Responses usually involve analysis such as grouping objects, describing objects and understanding object functions. Types of questions that you might ask at level two involve asking questions to encourage the child to describe the characteristics of an object, to identify object functions, so what do we use to eat with, for example, to answer who, what and where questions while showing them a picture or after a story, and sorting categories. Level three is all about retelling or reordering perception. And this is where the answer is not directly in front of you, but you can use clues from what you can see or hear. So the questions aren't about direct objects. So let's have a look at some examples. So we might ask the child to tell a story or describe an event. We might ask them to make predictions. So what might happen next? We might ask them to think about what a character might say or feel define a word or identify similarities. And finally, level four is about justifying and reasoning about perception. And again, the answer is not in front of you, but it's your own opinion this time. So it requires the child to problem solve, to predict, to provide explanations and draw on their own past experiences. So let's say we're looking at a picture of a group of people cooking in the kitchen. We might ask the child to make a prediction about what will happen in a specific scenario. So what will happen if they run out of food? To solve a problem. To select a means to a goal. So what do we need to eat soup with? To make an inference from an observation or whatever they're looking at in the picture. So how can we tell the sandwich on the side is old? Explain why something cannot be done. To identify the cause of a specific scenario and to explain the construction of objects. It's really important that questions are pitched at the right level for each child in order to support their understanding. And your speech and language therapist will have advised you which level your child is working at or which level they should be working towards. The blank levels framework can be used during structured or unstructured activities. So to start with, let's think about some of the structured activities. Your speech and language therapist might have sent you some picture scenes or they might have sent you some activities to work through. And there's also lots of information and picture scenes available on the internet that you can use. If you're a teacher who has access to Twinkle, for example, there's lots of information available about blank levels on there. So here you can see an example of one of the picture scenes that your speech and language therapist might have sent you or that you can find on Twinkle and the scoring sheets and questions that go alongside it. So all you have to do is sit down and have a look at the picture scene with the child and go through some of the questions. 
And particularly for younger children, it's helpful to have a think about some of the more unstructured activities where you can incorporate blank levels. So, for example, have a think about what questions you might ask at the different levels whilst you're playing in the sandpit or whilst you're playing in the water. And here you can see a really nice example of blank level one and level two questions that you can ask whilst playing with the tea set. If your child is having difficulties at a particular level and perhaps they're just finding the questions a little bit too tricky, then there are lots of things that you can do to support them and their understanding. So let's say you're working towards level two questions where the answer is in front of them, but they've got to look for it. If they're finding those hard, then you could simply just choose some questions from level one instead and move down a level. So let's say we're playing with a tea set. I might say, how many cups are there? That's a level two question. If that's too tricky, then you could just say, show me the cup. And that's a level one question. You could also repeat the question again. You could rephrase the question. You could simplify the question or break it down into smaller chunks. Or you could give them a choice. So going back to that cup example, I might say, are there three cups or are there four cups? You could also use gestures to support your child's response. So going back to that cup example, I could hold up four fingers or I could point to the different cups. You could also give verbal cues. So that could be giving the first sound of the word that you're wanting them to respond with. So let's again say I've asked how many cups are there. You could start to say there's and almost starting that sentence off for them sometimes can help. And sometimes it helps to demonstrate the answer as well. So let's say if I asked what would happen if we put water in this broken cup? If they can't quite respond, we might actually demonstrate it and see what happens and then talk about it. And sometimes it's helpful, particularly for some of the more complex questions, to relate them to the child's personal experiences. So if I said the spaghetti is really hard, how will it feel once it's been cooked? I might say something like, can you remember when we cooked potatoes the other day? How did they feel? And to support the child's understanding, it's really important that you've got their attention first before asking the question. So try to get down to their level or call their name and make sure you've got their attention. And the second thing is give them plenty of processing time. Sometimes these questions can be tricky and sometimes we don't give children enough time to respond. So make sure you are giving them that processing time that they might need. And the blank models of questioning can also be used to support emotional regulation and behaviour management. If a child has done something that they shouldn't have done, it's not uncommon for us to ask questions such as, why have you done that? Or what could you have done instead? But these questions are actually really tricky for children to understand and they're pretty complex pitched at around blank level four. So we need to really consider what level the child is at and what questions we could ask instead. So as an example, let's say a child has pushed another child in the playground and they're working at blank level two of the model. Instead of asking them why they behaved in a certain way, try to tell them exactly what's happened and how their behaviour has affected other people and try and keep it short and simple. Try to avoid using negatives such as don't and not because these words can be tricky for children to understand. So instead of saying don't push, you could say use kind hands. If the child is at level three, then you can ask them to describe what's happened, what people might have said or how others might have felt. But try not to ask them to justify their behaviour. Instead, you can state why they shouldn't have done something. So if they have pushed another child in the playground, you could say because it might hurt somebody. At level four, you can ask those trickier questions such as the whys and the hows. But if they're struggling to understand or to give you a response, simplify your language, repeat the question or model the correct response if needed. So 
So to summarise, it's really important that you're aware of what level your child is at and your speech and language therapist can help you with this. But it's also really important that you then adjust your way of speaking in order to support your child's understanding. And this is particularly the case for when you're asking your child to follow instructions during classroom work, when you're asking them general questions or when you're asking them to reflect on behavioural incidents. And it's also important that you become familiar with the different cueing strategies you can use when your child is struggling to understand a question or respond to a question. So that's those things we talked about, such as repeating a question or rephrasing the question or offering them a choice. And if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch.